Hello guys, I am Shane Davis, 20 year comic book veteran. I'm here with my beautiful, lovely, sometimes will make me a sandwich wife of mine, Yanzi Lin. And today's the day, word on the street, Tim Sheridan's Green Lantern, Gay Lantern, is selling horrific, selling wonderfully. And we're going to break this down, caught in 4K lying. Let's get into it. So a bit of context before this tweet. Last week, I was engaged in a debate with several creators and also fans of theirs, whereby I argue that it seems like a lot of writers these days are using a character's sexuality as the main marketing point for their characters or why you should buy their book, which in the case of the hot girl writer, she was like, yeah, look at all these characters over here. I'm going to clarify for you who is gay and who is straight in this panel over here. And of course, there's a lot of talk about signaling to the community and so on and so forth to try and get more people to read and buy the books. And Tim Schrader, most famous for telling people to buy his Green Lantern book because, um, well, um, Alan Scott is gay, but he was gay for a while already, but he's gay. Anyway, so someone came in and said that, yeah, yeah, he basically advertised as a gay Green Lantern book. So Tim comes on to explain because he did a video trying to convince people to buy his Alan Scott Green Lantern book. And he says that what he said in the video was actually to, I was asking for support to shut up the homophobes. Even though you're all still whining, the book has been selling great and the reviews are through the roof. So thanks for the signal boost, kissy face. Um, all right, so he's basically saying, buy my book to shut the homophobic chuds so that we can get all these comics get haters out of here and prove to them wrong that actually, diversity books sell, especially we wave the flag that they are gay and all that stuff. Now, what I didn't like about the way he framed it is that basically, if you just want to buy something so you can counter some cultural argument point, you're basically saying everyone else who didn't buy it is not for that cultural point. So in this case, you're saying, if you don't support this gay character, you're obviously homophobic. You see what that means, right? He's basically saying that everyone who didn't buy his Alan Scott Green Lantern book is homophobic. I mean, that's a pretty yuck statement to come from a writer for a company, but... So I replied to him. I did a quote tweet on that reply. As you can see, I have been blocked by Tim since. I told him this. Can't wait to see the sales chart from ICV2. Hope we will one day learn what the story is about. Because as we have mentioned when we did the video on Tim Sheridan's Green Lantern, he never actually told us what the story was about. It was like Green Lantern gay, Green Lantern gay, Green Lantern gay. Um, okay, sure, why not? I might so, because he's gay. <laughs> So how does this end up? See, there's one reply here, but he blocked me afterwards. And this was the reply. You guys with ICB2, you have to learn how to read these things. We're never going to chart on the monthly ranking because we release at the end of the month. Also, why do you care? What a bizarre fixation. Anyway, I wish you well. Um, Tim, you're the one with this weird, bizarre fixation on gayness. Like, why do you want to promote a character by saying they're gay? It's almost as ridiculous as promoting, oh, this character is straight. Like, why does the sexuality of a superhero matter again? Unless it is the focal point of the story. Unless you tell me there's a story about Alan Scott fighting the AIDS epidemic or something like that. I don't think his sexuality has anything to do with the story at all. But, all right. So let's dispel with the main crux of the argument here about ICB2. ICB2 actually documents the top sales in the industry for the month. We have looked. He is not in the top 50 in the month of October. He's in the top 200 for the month of October. So maybe not too bad, but when you rank number 80 on the sales chart of 200, we kind of know where the sales number is. And that's for the first issue, okay? Mm -hmm. That's where it, it, that's his launching number. That means issue number two probably ha will have a 30% drop. And if there's great reviews, then people can up their orders on issue number three. Keep in mind, he never told people to really buy his book until it was already manufactured and printed. All right, so the issue here is that when he says, we're never going to chart on the monthly ranking because we release at the end of the month. All right, so a little bit of explanation here on how comic book printing works. Comic book publishers only do one print run. That's it. They take all the orders. That's why there's this thing called a final order cutoff. So right. they can consolidate the number of books that all the people have done, and they can put it together and send that or print order over to whoever is printing their books. Now, they will print over for damages, and if there's a lot of hype behind the book, they can maybe add a little bit extra. My All my time at DC, the publisher actually wants to sell out, so they can brag. It doesn't matter what the initial orders are. They can brag that it actually 
triggered a sellout, which causes a second, third printing, fourth printing, whatever. When I worked on Rage of the Red Lanterns with Jeff Johns, it sold out like three or four times. Uh, the only reason they didn't keep printing it was the trade was coming out. So it was unnecessary to keep reprinting it. The company will purposely do this. The other thing is you really don't want to stock a lot of extra copies. Uh, and I have a feeling DC Comics knew this thing was going to be a dud. So let me put this in perspective. He's basically trying to say because we are printing at the end of the month, that means that people don't have the chance to order over the last few days of the month. But see, Tim, that is literally not how the direct market works. There's one print run. And then if the retailer decides, oh, hey, my customers really like this book, they will send in the order to Diamond, who will give them some of whatever copies they have left over. And that's it. It's done. It doesn't mean DC can go back to the printer and say, yeah, this retailer asked for two extra copies. Can you run your printers again just for them? It doesn't work like that. So it's not as if, if a book prints on the first of the month, it means that retailers can go in and order all the way from the first to the 31st of the month and all the extra copies. It no. literally doesn't work like that. Yeah, like now there could be some extra copies sitting in a diamond warehouse, but see, that isn't going to count as sales. Really. This is so weird. The way he's trying to fudge this is um, actually embarrassing. But he's working on the assumption that somehow, honey, you do not understand how the dark market works. My whole thing with Tim is, uh, and this goes back from the beginning, is he was holding a physical copy, multiple physical copies, variants and everything of his Green Lantern book, telling people to go order their book, order his book. I knew then and there this guy had no understanding of how the direct market works or comic shops work. He doesn't care about retailers. He just cares about gay Green Lantern. So much so that he didn't know to do that video about six weeks to two months earlier when FOCs were up. The fact he was able to physically hold the copy of his book meant the faucets turned off. It's already printed. Telling people and going out there to campaign to people to order your book is futile. The only thing they can do is go into a comic shop. And chances are somebody's going to go in the comic book shop looking for gay representation. And the comic book shop's going to say, well, I wish you told me this when I was ordering the book before. If you guys will hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notification. Also, CG Triple Threat covers are up. You can get Cyberfrog, Godlike, and Glorious Rex 1, all number one issues. They, they sandwich together with one nice image tripic cover. You guys will please go check that out. Also, back extend level up. The description is down below with the link. I'll leave you guys with a trailer for this smash hit comic. I dream. I dream of a world carefully crafted, beautifully flawed. This is Accent. In this game of life, there is one thing that determines a victor. A player's ability to grow. A player's ability to evolve. A player's ability to survive. My name is Dog. Choose to play. Choose to upgrade. Choose to level up. Choose to accept.